as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings again in the name of the Lord. This is Pastor Timothy Gidenji. I'm born again. I love the Lord. I am from Chris Cole New Life Church, Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you for joining us in this program. I'm teaching about purpose. I believe the Lord is going to bless you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. As your word is coming forth, I pray for revelation. I pray for clarity. I pray for understanding. And I thank you for this brother, for this sister who is following this teaching, Father, continuously. I pray for them, O oh God Almighty, that you speak to their lives in a special way, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that you remove the scales in our eyes. Remove the scales in our eyes, Father, to be able to see. Remove them, to be able to see and to understand, to fathom what your purpose is, our God. We thank you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So in our previous program, we are, we are looking at uh, how to check, to discover your inner self, to be able to know what God has for you and what God is calling you for. Hallelujah. Uh, there are several scriptures we have in the Bible that can be very helpful for you uh, to be able to help you to come to a place, of, uh, uh, a place of understanding your purpose. I like this scripture in the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verses 20. Apostle Paul says that I am crucified with the Lord Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Uh, when you come to purpose, when we come to knowing the will of God, that is where we start from. That's where we start from. That is the highest level of operation of a Christian of a Christian person of a Christian leader that is the highest place of operation that is the highest place of victory the highest place of reigning and ruling with the Lord Jesus Christ it is a high level hallelujah and uh, God operates from a high level God operates from a high level of purity and righteousness and even the devil himself also he operates from a, from a high level and no wonder even in the physical world, the devil likes to use mountains or high top, uh, 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 high, mount high mountain tops. He likes to use those places to establish his kingdom and to be able to rule from a higher place. But I want to give you a principle here and give you uh, a key that can help you to rule from a place of authority. Uh, we were reading in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And verses 6, where the Bible says, God has made us to sit together with the Lord Jesus Christ in the heavenly places. There's a place where conquerors stay. There's a place where believers stay. There's a possession. We need to be positioned. When God calls us to be born again, he also calls us to be positioned in him, which is our possession which is a possession of the sons of God, which is a possession of the people God has called into the kingdom of God. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, the word of God says, and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has raised us together with Christ to be able to sit together in the heavenly places. Heavenly places where? That is in the third heaven. Because the second heaven is occupied by Satan. And the principalities and powers of hell. Hallelujah. But uh, the third heaven is where we are seated with the Lord Jesus Christ. In the second heaven. In the third heaven. Apostle Paul says, I was caught up in the third heaven. I was caught up. He says, I don't know whether in the flesh or in the or in the, in the spirit. 
but I was caught up in the second heaven, in the third heaven. I was caught up there. And he says that the things he got there, the revelations he received from there, uh, some of them were so mysterious that could not, or could not even be uttered with words. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. And so, uh, as we continue with this teaching, I want to tell you that the highest place of operation of a Christian believer, and I believe this is a place of purpose, this is a place of understanding the will of God, the mind of God upon your life. It is found in, in that verse in the Galatians 2.20. And also in the book of Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, I, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mass of God, that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And be not conformed, be not conformed to the patterns of this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to know the perfect, uh, you may be able to know the good and the perfect will of God upon your life. What is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? Purpose is the perfect will of God. But many believers live outside the purpose of God, outside the purposes of God outside the will of God, outside the plan of God, because they have not taken time to discover their inner self. Let us study a few scriptures here. In the book of Romans, chapter, chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, the Bible reveals that all men have fallen into sin through Adam's transgressions. When Adam sinned, all of us we fell into sin, and we are, we are alienated from God, we are taken far away. And what Apostle Paul says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, that he has called us together, those who are far away, the Gentiles, and also the Jewish people who are near. He has brought us together. The book of Ephesians, I love it very much because it was written to a mature church. It was written to a church, and the theme of the book of Ephesians is unity oneness, called together, build up together, raised up together with Christ, called together in one body, one body, one spirit, one baptism, oneness even in family, between a husband and a wife. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. In chapter 5, called to be one, oneness of God. We have been called to be one, one with him. Christ the head, seated with him in the heavenly places, a place of dominion, a place of domin dominating, a place of ruling, ruling with him in this world that you can work with him. We are not working alone. He is the head of all principality. He is the head of the church. We are the body. I'm just a segment of the body. You are just a segment of the body. Your church is just a segment of the body. We are a part of the body, the body of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. So we are called into the body. We are called. He has called us into one body. But he is the head of the body. He is the head of all principality. Praise be to Jesus. In John chapter 1 verse 12, the word of God indicates that man can be changed from a son of Satan to a son of God. There is a spiritual transaction that takes place in the realm of the spirit. You cannot be able to know a born again person by the way they are dressing. You cannot be able to know a born again person by the way they are appearing on the outside. There is another work that happens in the inner man, not what we do in our fresh and kind of ways that causes us to have an identity in the kingdom, but it is because of the inner working of the cross. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, as your Lord and Savior by confessing Romans chapter 10 verse 9, Hallelujah. The word of God says you shall be saved that same hour. When you confess the Lord Jesus Christ, that same very minute, you shall be saved. There is going to be a transaction in the spiritual realm. There is going to be a purchasing. Hallelujah. You'll be brought back into the kingdom. You'll be redeemed back. You, you used to belong to God. Then you are stolen by the devil. The devil is a thief. The Bible says the devil is a thief. John 10, 10. For the devil, 
for the for the evil one comes the Satan to steal to destroy to kill and also to destroy but I Jesus says I came that me have life and have life abundantly not life for one day not life for two days but life abundantly the Lord has called you to come into a place of life he is your source and if he, if he is your source, if he is a source of your life, then you have to be in him for you to be able to receive much life from him. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. In Christ, there is life, life to transform people. And so we see here, there's a transaction that takes place in John chapter 1 verse 12. There's a transaction that normally takes place, a transformation which takes place through the only begotten Son of God. That transformation takes place when you yield yourself to God. If you, when we read in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verses 9, we find that the heart of a man, the natural man, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You know such scriptures are so amazing. Because we, we like to, uh, to estimate ourselves with our own parameters. We like to tell others and to ask others their opinion about us. How do you see me? And we want to hear their approval. And many people, they don't have the approval of God. They don't know whether God is approving what they are doing. They don't know the way they behave, whether God is approving that. They don't know the way they dress. Does God approve your dressing? When you're wearing so tight clothes and moving about, because that is what's accepted in your society. If you are truly walking with the God, if you are truly walking in the purposes of God, you can hear the Lord speaking to you in your inner man. You are not following the patterns and the ways of this world. First John chapter 2, verse 17, the world passes by and the last their love. Which are the last of their love? The last of the eyes, the last of the flesh is number one, the last of the eyes is number two, and the pride of life, the pride of life, hallelujah. The Bible says those things, I, they, they are the very main sets of the devil. They don't come from the Father. Where do they come from? They come from the kingdom of darkness. They come, they are, they are, they are orchestrated or patterned in the kingdom of darkness, hallelujah. In the, in, the, in, the, in the spiritual world of darkness, they don't come from the Father. What does not come from the Father? That kind of lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. They are not from the Father. So, we are told in Jeremiah 7, verse 19, verse, verses nine, 17, verse 9, uh, that, the, that the heart, my heart, in my natural life, it is deceitful. Meaning, it can lie to you. You may think you're right and you're wrong. You may think what you know is what is right or what you learn from that philosopher. You know, I, I, I was reading, I was reading a, a book about uh, philosophy. I was doing a topic in Bible school about philosophy. And I was, uh, I, was, I was going through that book and seeing how many people, how many philosophers came up with this. Another one came up with this. The mathematics philosophers, you know. The Greek, the Greek philosophers who were there before the AD, the, the person who discovered the atoms, you know, he, was, he came before Christ. Can you imagine, you know, those Greek philosophers? Uh, and then, uh, the way others, they could not believe there's, there is God, there's no supernatural, there's no another world except this one we have here. Uh, you know, they don't know anything. And then when I read about those men, and then I discover many of them, they don't know God. They never knew God. They learned so much, discovered so much. But the revelation, like Apostle Paul says, the revelation of Christ, they have missed that. They don't have the supernatural. But yet the supernatural is there. It is in, in, in existence. The supernatural is there. There is the realm of the evil one. The, the revo, the, the, there is the, the realm of the light. The realm of darkness and the realm of wickedness. Both of them exist. Even if you're not aware, even if you can ignore what I'm saying right now, because you're so learned, that is your problem. Because even if you don't accept, there's the realm of the evil one. The things we see that are happening, evil things you are seeing they are happening, there's another realm that is controlling them, 
in the spiritual realm. Spiritual realm means in a way that is out of this world that you cannot see with the natural eyes, but it is in existence. It is there. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. So, man in your carnal nature, man in his own natural way, is the heart of a man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. No other God needs to help our hearts so much. No other God needs to search our hearts if you are to come somewhere with him. If you are to do anything for him in this earth. As a servant of God, as a minister of God, as a child of God, as a believer, if you are going to do something for the Lord, for the kingdom of God, this is going to bring a change. The working of the inner man has to be there. Hallelujah. The book of Romans chapter, uh, chapter 7 verse 18. Paul describes that in the flesh, in the carnal self, dwelleth nothing good. Apostle Paul understood this. And I know he understood this very well because uh, he was a persecutor of the church. And I think he felt very foolish after he got the supernatural. That light came and shined upon him and hit him on the ground. And he was asking, who, who are you, Lord? Who are you? Who, who are you? How did you, how did you bring, bring me down? Who are, this must be the Lord. And you know, Jesus was speaking to him and telling him, Paul, 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 you, it is not those, those brethren you're persecuting. It is me. I, the Lord Jesus Christ, he appeared to him. He told him, go into the city. They are going to show you what you are going to do. Because it is me you're persecuting, not those little brethren over there. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul says, nothing good is in my flesh. If you want to know your purpose, you have to know there's nothing good in your flesh. In your carnal nature, nothing good. You lay your flesh on the altar. You are I, 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 the way I want. If it's not this way, nothing else. I see people joking nowadays and saying, you see that phrase, uh, when, they are, when they are making relationships, they're saying, if it is not this way, then let, let it not be. Hallelujah. But uh, that is the carnal nature. That's how you speak. That's how you operate in your carnal nature. 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called after my name, says the Lord, shall harbor themselves and turn from their wicked ways. Then the Lord says, I'm going to come down and I'm going to heal the lad. That is revival. That is revival because the lad not, it does not speak necessarily about uh, mountains and hills and shambas and what, all of you, so we do farming. It just speaks about the heart of people. The Lord speaks about nations, people. God is interested in people, human beings. Because when human beings are right, they are walking right before God. Even the Lord receives healing. In the town of Guatemala in South America, when the people repented and they started praying and repenting and praying and re repenting, uh, in that town of Guatemala, uh, 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 the people... The lad was healed, and they were producing a lot of good food. Very big carrots, very big beetroots, very big cabbages. And, the, and even the, 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 the agricultural researchers came to do some research on the soil to check what happened to the soil in Guatemala because the, the lad was producing. And finally, they nicknamed that small town the, the, veg the, the Vegetable Garden of America. You know? Because the whole town got saved. The people repented until all the, all the jails, the four jails that were there, they were closed down. You see, that's what we are talking about. That's what we are talking when one man discovers what they are supposed to do for God. That's what, what, what happens when a nation repents. This thing is not for one person. Revival is, will not be brought by one man. Of course, in generations, God has used one man because all other men were sleeping and they were sleepy-headed and lazy and they don't pray, they don't forgive, they don't, uh, they don't pray, for, uh, uh, pray for long. 
you know they are just lazy and running after the worldly things. Sometimes God is forced to use only one person to bring revival. But my conviction is God wants to raise many people across the globe who are going to be sold out to him, walking in purity and holiness. And then the Lord is going to bring revival. He's going to bring the fire of revival that is going to heal even the soil. When my people who are called after my name shall harbor themselves and turn from their wicked ways, I, the Lord, is going to heal the nations. I'm going to bring revival upon the nations. Romans 8, 8, chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 13. Paul explains that the, that the believer, if he reverts to live in the flesh, in, in the freshery life, he'll die spiritually. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. To be carnally minded is death. You can die spiritually. You can live a life, but you are dead spiritually. Adam did not die physically uh, when he sinned, but he died spiritually. The heaven became like brass. He was not hearing God anymore. He lost the communion with God. And all his generations down, they were very wicked men and women. They were so immoral. And sometimes he would destroy the whole world with a flask of water. And he rescued only one man who found grace in the eyes of God called Noah. The Bible says, and Noah found grace in the eyes of God. So uh, the kind of nature can lead to serious destruction. And people are not able to enter into their purposes in God. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, hmm? Romans chapter 8 from verses 26, this verse speaks about how the Holy Ghost is able to help us to bring us into the image of Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 26, likewise the Spirit also help, helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. We are called or predestinated to be conformed or to be transformed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And once you attain the image of the Lord, once you attain the image, you are able to know your purpose. You are able to know the program God has for you or not. Holy Spirit, we depend upon you. We do not know how to pray as we old, but we pray that you help us. Help us, Holy Ghost. Shakara la 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 bo. Ripa pa 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 pa. Open our eyes. Open our eyes, Lord. Shada da 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 bo. Raka saka makaya ntende re 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 bo. Open the eyes of my sister and my brother. Ira mashanda bakura ba 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 ba. Help us to discover our inner self. Help me, Lord Jesus, as your servant, to discover my inner self, Lord. Korobo shika, roko ba shika ba 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 Help us to discover in self, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Makaraba sekaraba shikaraba shikaraba ba 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 Shada ba 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 To discover the inner man, the inner man, the inner man, Lord. I pray that you release an anointing, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. 
oh God Almighty, that you're going to call men and women, especially young people in this generation, Lord Jesus, to come from the regions of captivity of the enemy, to be able to enter their purposes in God. I pray, let there be a sudden call upon this nation, Father. Kura shikiri ba 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 ba. I shall tayan tandararabu. Shara ba 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 ba. Move by your spirit in our generation, Father. Move by your spirit in our generation, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord open your eyes. May the Lord open your ears. May the Holy Ghost help you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. See you in our next program as we continue with this teaching. And God bless you. Amen.